Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about the coagulation cascade. Now I know many of us have, have, have heard that the coagulation cascade is scary or very difficult to memorize, but that's actually not true guys. Once you get, once you've kind of gone through the pathway a couple of times, it gets, it gets much easier to remember. So just to begin, uh, say we've got some exposed endothelium here, maybe that's from a cut or maybe that's from damage to your blood vessel. but uh, from the trauma, you get some exposure of endothelium. Now what happens, guys, is that um, tissue factor and activated factor 7, lucky number 7, um, is released. Um, and uh, just to point out that I have a little A here, that just signifies activated. So when I have a little A, that just means that uh, the, the number, the factor number is activated. So once you get tissue factor and activated um, lucky number 7, uh, you are going to get... Um, these two are going to actually activate minute amounts of factor 10 to minute amounts of activated factor 10. So again, that's a very key to remember, minute amounts. Uh, once you have minute amounts of, of activated factor 10, uh, this, acti uh, this factor 10 is going to activate minute amounts of prothrombin to thrombin. So minute amounts of prothrombin to thrombin. And now another, another name for prothrombin is actually factor 2. So you may have seen that, okay, uh, you may have seen that factor 10 uh, activates factor 2, and that's true uh, because prothrombin is actually factor 2, which is another name for it. So um, activated factor 10, minute amounts, again, minute amounts of activated factor 10 activates small amounts of prothrombin to thrombin. So uh, once you get to thrombin, that's kind of where the ball gets rolling. Um, thrombin is kind of like the, the boss of the, the pathway. It's kind of like the, the delegator, the, uh, the DJ of the pathway. It kind of gets everything going and, and rolling. So um, what, uh, once you get to kind of this point here, guys, once you get to that first uh, small amount of thrombin, um, you've officially finished the initiation phase of the pathway. So once you get to thrombin, you've kind of got done the initiation phase. So it's just getting started. So once you get to that little minute amount of thrombin produced, the pathway gets started. It kind of gets everything rolling. Um, and what it does is um, thrombin will um, activate, it'll activate several different factors, but um, the, the next, actually the next step in the pathway is actually um, the activation of factor 11 to activated factor 11 by thrombin. Again, thrombin actually activates a factor 11 to activated factor 11. And then activated factor 11 will, uh, will convert a factor 9 to activated factor 9. And then uh, a, key, uh, a key component of this step is that th thrombin will actually activate factor 8 as well um, to activated factor 8. And um, activated factor 9, activated factor 8, um, phospholipids, so I have PL signifying phospholipids, and calcium will they'll form a complex, and then they'll cause the activation of a large amount of factor 10 to activate a large amount of activated factor 10. So again, guys, I know that might sound a little complicated. I'll go over that again. So right after you get minute amounts of thrombin produced, uh, the minute amounts of thrombin are going to cause the activation of uh, factor 11 to activated factor 11. Factor 11 activates um, um, or converts factor 9 to activated factor 9. Um, and pro uh, thrombin is going to also activate um, factor 8 to activated factor 8. And once you have both activated factor 9 and activated factor 8, along with phospholipids and calcium, they all form a complex and then they activate large amounts of factor 10 to large amounts of activated factor 10. Now, once you've got large amounts of activated factor 10, thrombin again is going to, or has already, activated factor five to activated factor five. So um, you'll, have, you'll have large amounts of activated factor 10, and you'll also have activated factor five. Now again, with, uh, along with phospholipids and calcium, these uh, will all form a complex which will activate or convert large amounts of prothrombin to large amounts of thrombin. And once you get large amounts of thrombin, um, large amounts of thrombin are going to convert fibrinogen um, to fibrin. 
uh, soluble fiber monitors actually at this point. Um, and another important thing to note is that fibrinogen also has another name. Fibrinogen is actually also known as factor one. So you might have seen that as well, uh, factor two activating factor one. So that's, that's just another name for factor one. So once you get large amounts of thrombin, large amounts of thrombin are going to activate uh, fibrinogen to uh, soluble fibrin monomers. So I have here soluble monomers. And so that, that, the, the pathway is not complete at this point yet, guys. Um, what will happen is thrombin will have, will have activated another factor, factor 13, to activate the factor 13. So unlucky, number 13. Uh, and uh, factor 13 will actually, um, will actually convert the soluble fibrin monomer to um, insoluble fibrin polymers. So the, the, uh, the fibrin will actually become like a mesh at that point. And that's pretty much where it ends, guys. You get, that, you get a good uh, formation of a stable clot at that point. So once you've got to the, that uh, insoluble fibrin polymer, this whole part of the pathway is known as the amplification phase. So amplification phase. So you kind of, you know, you, you actually come back to the same point um, where, you know, you've had small amounts of, of 10, small amounts of activated factor 10 and small amounts of thrombin. Now you've got large amounts. So you've amplified the, the response. So this is called the amplification phase of the pathway. So another thing to note, guys, is that you may have heard of factor 12. Now, you, um, factor 12, like all the other factors, actually gets activated to uh, activated factor 12. And now you may be wondering, okay, what does is, what is activated factor 12 do? Well, actually, activated factor 12 actually activates factor 11. So you may be wondering, okay, why do we have factor 12? Why don't, why don't we just use factor 12 and, and get, get to the same conclusion? Well, it, it seems that factor 12 is, is, is not really relevant or is redundant in the human body. Um, so it's... It, it, it exists, but it doesn't really take part in the pathway because in actuality, it actually takes longer to get from t uh, factor 12 down to fi uh, insoluble fiber and polymers than it does from um, tissue factor and activated factor seven to get to uh, fiber and, or insoluble fiber and polymers. So it, it seems to be a, a slower mechanism. Factor 12 is actually very important when, when we do laboratory tests uh, to measure some of these factors in the, in the, in the lab. So I'm just going to go into um, a little bit, talk about a little bit of that right now. So um, this, the pathway um, us, utilizing factor 12 is actually known as the, the uh, intrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway um, involves factor 12 in leading you to um, uh, the fiber and insoluble fiber and polymer. Now, an easy way for me to remember intrinsic is that I think of it as uh, in, it's in the pathway. So um, it's kind of in, in, the, in the middle of the pathway. That's how I think of it. So if you think of this as an entire pathway, intrinsic pathway is kind of like it, it kind of intersects in the middle of the pathway. It's in the middle of the pathway. So in the pathway. That's how I can remember that it's intrinsic. So because this pathway, um, so because um, the pathway starting with factor 12 is known as the intrinsic pathway, the pathway starting with tissue factor and activated factor 7 is known as the extrinsic pathway. So this is the extrinsic pathway when you start with um, tissue factor and, and activated factor seven. So, and because they both utilize a similar pathway um, here, they both, they both use uh, activated factor 10 and thrombin and fibrin. This pathway is actually known as, so this, I'm just gonna, going to circle this part of the pathway. This part of the pathway is known as the common pathway. So 
that part of the pathway is known as a common pathway because both extrinsic and intrinsic uh, pathways use um, factor 10 and thrombin. As you see here, the uh, extrinsic pathway uses those factors as well. Also, I just want to give you guys some quick uh, tips and tricks to help you remember the coagulation cascade. Um, now, how I remember is that, okay, um, if when, when the cascade it starts, um, you get lucky number seven, lucky number seven at the beginning. Uh, then you get 10, um, prothrombin and thrombin, that's pretty easy. So once you get minute or small amounts of thrombin, just think of thrombin, uh, just think of those, that small amount of thrombin as the, the boss, the, the delegator. Um, of the of the uh, co coagulation cascade pathway, and this kind of gets everything everything going. So um, the next thing that happens, so you remember factor ten, then you go to factor eleven. That's pretty easy um, because you you know okay the, the last factor number you remember was factor of, uh, factor ten. So the next next one is factor eleven. Uh, so factor eleven gets activated. And then you're gonna go um, so you're gonna go then you're gonna go down from ten to nine. And you're gonna get eleven to nine. Um, eight and nine are right beside each other um, as numbers, so they're used together. And then eight and nine are going to go to uh, activate large amounts of ten. Um, and uh, five and ten, so five and ten, five is half of ten. So those two are going to be used to activate pro large amounts of prothrombin to thrombin. And then thrombin is going to activate uh, fibrinogen to, to soluble fiber monomers. So that's pretty easy um, if you kind of think of it that way. So you kind of go on from like 10, you go up to 11, then you go back down to nine, nine and eight are together in the, in the uh, uh, together as numbers. Um, then you go back to 10 and then five and 10 are together. Five is half of 10. Um, once you get to the soluble fiber monomers, then you're gonna have factor 13, unlucky number, factor 13. So you start with lucky number seven, then you end with unlucky number 13 and you, then you get um, insoluble fiber and polymers. So that's kind of a method to try to remember this pathway. Anyways guys, I hope that helped. That was an overview of the coagulation cascade. In the next videos, I'm gonna be talking to you about the laboratory tests that are used to measure some of these factors in the pathway, as well as uh, some regulators of the pathway.